Thank you. Thank you very much. So I, I'm going to talk about uh, using SVS as a guide to writing unit and integration tests. So from that perspective, my topic is not a great chosen name. So we're not really going to automate the SVS, although writing test cases once and executing them in your pipelines is obviously sort of an automation. I like to do my presentations with a two-minute sort of elevator pitch, what I'm going to talk about, what are my conclusions. So if you pick the wrong talk or you want to do something else, you have to work. This should be enough for you to get the gist of it. And then I'm going to dive deeper in. So in a nutshell, uh, application security uh, requires a systematic approach, and you cannot get away with just having some patching in there, having some pen testing, and in the best case, architectural review. And if you think that um, AI and tools are going to solve it magically, they are not. They could even become part of the problem rather than uh, the solution, although if you're doing things right, they're obviously part of the solution. So if you look at these uh, sort of uh, chart or a process, Typically, when you develop software, you go from an analysis to operations and maintenance. You cannot do these uh, snapshots or gated activities. You have to go uh, all the way, and you have to practice security across the entire development lifecycle. That is the problem. Now, the solution is obviously OWASP SAM. Uh, anybody who hasn't heard of SAM? I see a hand here, but I know he's, he, it's, it's a joke. He clearly has heard of Sam because he had a talk before me about Sam. Um, so Sam is a model, and the great thing about Sam is that it covers everything. So everything is in there. AppSec, I'm talking about AppSec. I'm not talking about cybersecurity in general. So resetting passwords and making sure that you don't click on the wrong links. That is not uh, an application development. Um, and Sam provides a concrete solution for every aspect of security in your AppSec development lifecycle. The downside of SAM is it could be overwhelming, and the typical question that I get, that we get, uh, is, so which ones shall we pick first? And my answer is, you should focus on security requirements and test cases. Leverage ASVS as a security requirements framework and write test cases based on those ASVS requirements and put them in your uh, CI, CD, so integrate them as uh, automation, which leads to sort of you're going to automate your requirements and you're going to have more automation, and automation is always a great thing. It's not just a document sitting there. And that's what we did, and that's what I'm going to talk about. So we have picked ASVS. We did a, a theoretical analysis of 278 ASVS requirements, ASVS version 4, uh, and we believe that Based on this analysis, 189 of those requirements are automatable, again, in the sense of you're going to write test cases and you're going to execute them every time in your CI CD. Um, there is also some tooling here, but I'm not going to talk about it much. And we have the next step was, of course, hey, you did this theoretical analysis, that's awesome, but really? Uh, so we put, where, uh, we put our money where our mouth is, and we actually went and implemented 90 out of those 278 ASVS tests for a a uh, tool that we have, um, it's a SaaS platform, and uh, we did it in 10 man days. That, that's what my talk is all about. Now if you think like, nah, this is not for me, feel free to walk. Uh, I'm not going to be mad or anything, or you can just work. Okay, about me, because uh, I, my name is Aram, and basically I'm the CEO of Codific, and Codific is a, a product company, and I've been in uh, security research for about 15 years, probably, and that sort of has pushed, that was pushed in our company's DNA. So we literally breathe security. And at night, I'm also part of OWASP. I fight crime as part of OWASP SAM core team member, OWASP SAM team. Um, and uh, in my free time, I'm a semi-professional kite surfer, as you can see here. Uh, you are free to follow me on LinkedIn. I'm going to add everyone that I see has something to do with security. So let's jump into the, uh, into the details. First part is, again, to revisiting the problem statement. So I'm going to go in each topic that I already discussed in the elevator pitch in more depth. Um, the problem is that, um, as I said, application security is both a broad discipline and it also goes very, very deep. And tools and AI is not going to solve it just like that. 
So it's nothing new, people, processes, knowledge, and tools. And actually, SAM is the solution. What is SAM for people who haven't seen it, heard it, maybe you just heard of it a little bit. It's an industry standard AppSec framework, and it provides the necessary uh, building blocks to measure where you are in terms of your security practices. It gives you an actual number, which is awesome. And it's actionable, so it can help you improve from there based on the, the model will help you and it'll guide you to improvements. And it is agnostic of a technology, a company, and uh, so it's, it's independent of anything that you can think of. And basically what Sam tells you is you, you cannot go and do all of Sam. You have to do this cycled approach where you plan, do, check, and, and, and act, and then you're going to recycle that. Now, the implementation issues with SAM, like I already mentioned, the first thing is once you get SAM, you typically get overwhelmed and you might start thinking about boiling the ocean. I have seen uh, in my experience teams that go want to go from zero to hero and they're going to go from a score of one to, uh, that SAM is a score between zero and three, that's the, max, the minimum and the maximum. Teams that want to go from one to two and a half in a couple of months, that is obviously not going to work. So on the one side, you, you don't want to boil the ocean, and on the other side, you end up with, okay, we're not going to boil the ocean, but then what shall we pick? What is, the, what is a good activity to start with? And the, the, the theme of this topic is you should start with ASVS, and in a way that I'm going to describe here, so you're not going to use it as a checklist, but you're going to actually write test cases. Looking back at the SAM model, basically doing that, is going to help you score very high for software requirements because ESVS is a framework and once you pick that, you're landing, you're going to get a high maturity score for software requirements. With that, you also should make sure that you verify them in your, either manually, which I propose here that you should verify them with test cases. So you're going to get a high score for control verification. And then these are the central uh, SAM activities that, uh, practices that you're going to score really high if you do this, uh, and there are some tangential uh, streams and practices where you're also gonna be uh, getting scores because you are doing this approach. And those are uh, misuse, abuse testing, some part of your secure build because you're gonna have those uh, uh, regression test suites added to your CI CD pipelines and your basic security testing. Now, by the way, this is not a very popular opinion. I'm, I think I'm like the first one who, who, who thinks this. I'm not, I'm not sure you can disagree with me and we can chat or you can ask me questions after the end of the presentation, but I haven't really heard of anybody, anybody saying do this as a first thing to improve your SAM. I might be also biased because we have, as a company, we have covered a lot of other SAM activities, so our maturity level is pretty high and it, it could be possible that you should not start with this, but you should get to this as fast as possible. Now, one more thing about SAM. So, by the way, I'm not involved with the ASVS project at all. I, we are going to get involved, though, uh, most probably. Um, but I'm part of a SAM project, and we have the SAM benchmark, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, I don't have a clicker. But if you look on the left side, so the top best scoring security activities, and SAM benchmark is an industry benchmark that we got the first data about. Security requirements are scoring extremely high which means that the industry is sort of shifting left and they are scoring very high for that. But then the lowest scoring activity is requirements testing. So, which means, in my opinion, they are using, mostly they are using SVS because this is out of experience. I've been doing some SAM assessments. I've seen some companies and most of them use SVS because there isn't nothing else, to be honest. At least I haven't seen. Um, they use it as some formality, but they are not really, really using it, if you ask me, if they are not testing them. By the way, testing, it's, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to automate it. And a score of 1.05 would hint towards that they are not really doing anything with that. So that's a paradox, and I highly recommend to actually test them. Okay, that is the problem statement. What did we do? Well, like I said, we picked ASVS, and what is ASVS? It's a requirements frameworks for a framework which is based on uh, best practices, and it's sort of driven by experts from the industry. And what you can do with ASVS, before that, I want to 
a quick show of hands to see who has actually heard of ASVS. Okay, excellent. Who has used SVS in any way? And then who uses it on a regular basis? All right, let's say 25% of the room. And who has used ASVS to, as a guide to write test cases and integrates them in CICD pipeline? I see one hand, but I'm pretty sure that's someone from our firm. I see a I see couple of hands. So I see two hands, three, three, and then one uh, of our colleagues, which doesn't count by Okay, um, ASVS has many uses, uh, so there are different type of use cases, and we're going to focus in this talk on using it as a guide for automated testing. But then my claim is also that once you do that, you're going to also pretty much cover other use cases automatically, because let's pick secure development training. Once you uh, mandate the QA and the uh, and the, uh, and the dev team to write test cases for your SVS requirements, they will have, I mean, they're going to learn about it anyway. You're going to tell them, okay, write a test case for checking uh, password requirements based on SVS. They're going to understand what it means eventually because they have to write a test case for that. So it, it also comes in as a sort of hands-on training that they have to do without watching a single YouTube video. They might be watching for more complicated SVS requirements, though. Um, but you sort of implicit, uh, starting from this use case, you're going to cover a lot of other use cases. And my claim is also it's not that hard. It's not that painful. OK, so what we did is we looked at two research questions. The first research question was, which ASVS requirements are suitable for this sort of automation using any, any techniques, any tools? And the second use case was, what is the return, uh, sorry, the second research question was, what is the return on investment for using SVS as a guide for writing test cases? Now, the first research question was, what we did is the following. So this is the process behind it. We picked the SVS as it is. Uh, there is an Excel version of SVS, which is great. And then we went line by line analyzing, okay, can we automate this? Yes or no? or partially, because some ASVS requirements, you could add some automation, you could write some test cases for them, but it's difficult to cover the complete ASVS requirement. And then we also uh, theoretically determined, is it a unit test, is it a tool, a SAS, DAST, or a CA tool, or is it an integration test? By the way, I'm not affiliated with any SAS, DAST, or SA tool provider, so my talk is absolutely not about that. But it is interesting because some of the requirements that you have in SVS are very difficult to test with unit tests because you sort of a need of, um, for instance, they say, do you use CSERF tokens everywhere or do you use a dangerously escape um, HTML in your React application? That function, it is very difficult to write a test case that makes sure that you don't use it while a tool can quickly detect that because it's sort of a pattern matching. So for some of these tests, you need a, st a tool. Um, and then we wrote down which is the testing strategy. That's what we did. There is, by the way, a link here where you can check that Excel yourself. I've also shared it on the Slack channel of OASP SVS. Um, yeah, you can also approach me and I'll give you the link. Um, so you can play with it. Some examples. Um, and by the way, at this moment, I have to say that some of the requirements are open to interpretation, and I'm going to come back to it in the threats to the validity, um, which I will discuss in the next slide. But one of the ASVS requirements is user passwords are at least 12 characters in length. Obviously, you can easily write a unit test for this. I hope you have written a unit test for this. If you haven't, it's, like I said, it's very easy to do. And then it's a unit test, and it's fully automatable. By the way, if somebody asked me what is the definition of unit and integration test, I'm, I got to say I'm shaky on that. We have a lot of uh, disagreements internally in the team. Where is the border? Where do you put that line? This is a unit or integration test. Let, let's call them one thing. Um, then you have also op obviously acceptance test, which is a separate bucket. Another test which you can fully test. But then the second test now here, insecure direct object references. Uh, you have to protect against that. You can write, again, unit test cases for that. But it is much more complicated because you have to go in your API and you have to put it for every API request. You have to check, okay, is this something relevant for IDOR? And then write a test case for every single one, 
which is sort of you hit already some scalability issues here. Another example of, a, of an SVS requirement is where, where it's handled by a com combination of two things. So having a strong anti CSERF mechanism enforcement, you can do a unit test to make sure that your anti CSERF, uh, so your anti CSERF mechanism is actually enforced. Um, and then you can use a SAS tool to make sure that it's everywhere where you have a submission of a form because you might forget some places to put that. Um, an example of a partial coverage, Theoret again, this is a theoretical analysis. Um, having a, a vetted authentication mechanism with logging, having a unit test or any test for making sure that you're using a vetted authentication mechanism is at least very hard, and I think it's pretty much impossible because that's a manual check. You have to check for your security pattern that you're using the right thing, that you're using best practice in certain technology, but you can use the, you can uh, implement the logging part as a, a unit test. So a unit test will then make sure that if you have a request uh, for authentication, so your authentication, wherever it happens, that it's actually locked. And then finally, an example of a requirement which you cannot automate by any means, protection against likely business risks or threats. There you have to go and start threat modeling um, you, you might now ask me, can't you automate that as well? Uh, I would say no. So you cannot, you cannot use any tools or unit tests to automate this one. It's, it's a process uh, level control. Okay, we did that, and now time for the results. So we believe, based on our analysis, that 170 out of 278 ASVS requirements, which is two-thirds roughly, is fully automatable using... Uh, a combination or a single uh, method, unit integration acceptance or any tooling. I'll show you in the next slide what is the split uh, between the techniques. 19% is partially automatable and, two, and one third is not automatable. That is our conclusion here. And then, again, a very interesting one. And by the way, I'm a big fan of unit and integration tests. Why? Because your dev teams already know how to do that and they have to do it. I mean, I hope they have to do it because it's part of a solid software development process. And you, if you throw in your security requirements there as well, they know how to, they know how to implement that. There's nothing new here. They will have to understand what that requirement means and your analyst who writes that requirement have to figure it out. But hey, that's in SVS, right? So the majority of testability is possible with unit and integration tests only. And then there is a chunk, uh, a pretty big chunk with SAST, because again, I mentioned it earlier, it is very handy to detect sort of a certain patterns, which are largely impossible to automate with unit testing. You could still do some weird things to do that with unit tests, but you would, you would lose a ton of time. And again, like I said, I'm not against tooling, but if you just use tooling and hoping that it's going to solve it, uh, that's, that's questionable. 10% um, is using dust. Uh, there are a couple of tests. There are a couple of requirements which explicitly say you have to have an um, an S bomb and making sure you don't have vulnerable packages in your working code. Um, so you have to use an SCA tool. And um, five of them are using acceptance tests. And for those who don't know what acceptance test is, these are sort of a um, QA, let's say a QA manually clicks on certain buttons to make sure that something is happening on the page. For instance, one of ASVS requirements says you have to have the possibility to view your password using plain text. So once you type your password, especially when you're choosing your password, you have to have like an icon where you can switch between the stars or the dots to an actual text. That is something that is uh, very difficult. Well, we couldn't succeed doing that in unit or integration tests, so that's sort of a QA test who has to click on it. And that is something that you can automate with acceptance tests. Okay, and <clears throat> now, threats to validity. I'm, I have a researching, I'm, I have background in research, so you always have to say, is this really true? And I'm going to mention uh, the most important threats to validity that came to mind. Obviously, you can disagree and give more, and I'm very happy, and I'm open to that. 
Um, one of the biggest threats to the validity is requirements interpretation. Some requirements in SVS are very easy to understand, password requirements. Others could be much harder to understand and interpret, and they are open to interpretation, I would say, at least in version 4. Version 5 is probably going to improve that. Um, some examples, you could have a very shallow interpretation of a requirement and end up with a very easy uh, unit test, but then you don't really cover it in depth. You could also over-engineer things um, where you would go and write unit tests for things which you can do, do it in an, a lot easier way. The second threat to the validity of, the, of my conclusions based on this study is a tech stack and solution dependence. So the test that we, um, th when analyzing this uh, SVS requirements, we had a specific tech stack in mind and a specific uh, application. And if you pick a different technology, it, it might be a lot harder to end up with the same uh, set of conclusions, or you could even cover more. And finally, I have seen some limitations in the tooling capabilities. So wherever I put that this tool can do it, I didn't really go and look in a specific tool, but I thought like, okay, a tool should be able to do this. And there are a couple of requirements where a tool wasn't uh, uh, able to do to achieve that uh, based on our technology. Uh, that's the first part of, of the talk. In the second part, I'm going to discuss what we actually did. Uh, so we went and we implemented some of these uh, ASVS requirements. And here is uh, the experimental setup, what it looked like. So we picked one of our SaaS projects, which is not a small, small project. It's written in Symfony PHP. It's about a four-man-year project. And then we added 98 ASVS requirements to a sprint planning, which means this is not exactly what you should do because you should start from requirements and ask engineers to implement them and write test cases after that. What we did is we added the requirements and asked the test engineer to implement them as test cases, assuming they're already implemented in the system. So it's sort of a test-driven development for security requirements. And we, we told the junior engineer to go, if you are familiar with CrossFit terminology, AMRAP, as many requirements as possible in eight mandates. A senior engineer was also involved helping him interpret that, and that was me, by the way. So I spent about two days to help him out, to sometimes check what he did. Is that correct implementation of the requirement, sort of code review, um, and which totals out to 10 mandates. So in 10 mandates, we implemented 98 SVS requirements. This is how it looked like, by the way. This is a sort of a... Um, it's not Jira, we use Utrek, um, but you can think of Jira. You just dumped it in a Jira board and said, okay, go and implement them. The results, we've actually implemented 90 out of those 98. Why we picked those 98? Because they seemed reasonably not too complex. So we, we weren't gonna waste 10 days to implement one requirement or, or we were gonna do as many as possible in a short time period. And this is why we picked those 98. Eventually, we had to drop eight because they were too difficult to implement. And there was no time for them. Now, interesting thing is, like I said, we added the test cases as a re as sort of requirements. But then we didn't ask the teams to implement it. We asked the ten test engineer to write test cases for those requirements. And some of the test cases were failing because the requirement wasn't implemented. Some examples. MFA replay attacks, so the application suffers from that. It's not crazy uh, serious, I would say. I don't have a CVSS score for that, but uh, so if you log in simultaneously from two browsers, you could use the same MFA token and you will be logged in. And SVS says you should protect, so only the first token should pass. The second token should, uh, uh, the second screen should disallow the reuse of the same MFA token. And then mailing or MFA reset, but yeah, there were a couple of more. Um, which means they ended up in the actual requirements, uh, in the actual uh, implementation boards. We haven't implemented all the test cases in depth, so some of these tests that we have implemented are only partial implementations. They were sort of a proof of concept. By the way, the implementations of these test cases is uh, also released as uh, we have an open source version of the SAMI tool. Um, and the test cases are actually there. So if you want to check the test cases, 
I, I'm happy to share the link after the talk. And I told you that I'm going to, the, the research question was to look into return on investment. Uh, we know what was the investment, but we, it, it's, it's hard to sort of determine what is the return on that. We don't know, and I'm open to suggestions how we could measure that. But now think about it. We have now, every time there is a build, the test cases will run, and this is what it looks like. So these SVS tests, they were also tagged by SVS tag and referring to a certain requirement. They will run, and if somebody makes a mistake, these tests will uh, break, and they will break your build pipeline, which is what you want to have at the end of the day. So um, looking again at this pie chart of the full ASVS, we have implemented roughly one-third of it in actual uh, production application in 10 mandates. Some of them were partial, not too many, 25 out of 80. Sorry, 90? Yeah, 90. 25 out of 90, out of 90 were uh, partially implemented. 65 out of 90 were fully implemented. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, some threats to the validity for the second part of our analysis. Obviously, the conclusion validity is, is less, um, it, it, uh, sorry, the, the, some of the threats to the validity from the first part, like interpretation of requirements, are still valid here. Additional threats to the validity of this is that the team already had quite some ASVS experiment, uh, experience. And we already also had some tests which we copied from other systems. We use the same tech stack across all our SaaS applications, and we do this for other SaaS applications, which means that we could just sort of copy-paste, but then sort of a smart copy-paste where some things need to be, to be adapted, which is great news, which means that if you are using the same tech stack and you write the test cases for one of the applications, and you give it to, an, to the same engineer to, or to another engineer, he's going to be much faster implementing those because it's sort of a pattern uh, copy-pasting. It will be also easier for him to understand what those requirements are about. And yeah, like I said, shallow implementations are possible as a threat to validity for this one as well. Okay. Now, that brings me to my conclusion slide. So I would say... Start using SVS as a guide to writing test cases, not just for documentation purposes. And I would suggest starting small, maybe not with 90 requirements or 98, with a couple of requirements, see how it's going. And then you can even add your own requirements to ASVS. So you don't have to implement the full ASVS. Some of the requirements from ASVS were not really applicable to us. Um, that is also the reason that we picked 98. You could, though, add some corporate policies and standards which you have in place. You could derive requirements for that or co uh, compliance obligations that you have. You could derive, again, requirements from that and add to that um, sort of requirements framework. And then you can mandate the writing of test cases for those. Maybe not all of them, but still a sizable chunk of them could be, um, could be automated. And that will automatically create a common team across your software development lifecycle because... You will have analysts and architects specifying those requirements. You will have engineers who will write, uh, write those, implement those requirements, and they will be mandated to write test cases. I hope you ask your engineers to implement some basic test cases for every requirement that they write. Once you have security requirements in your pipelines, they will have to write a test case for that. And then have a QA in place to verify them, especially the ones which are harder to implement with unit and integration tests. You could just have the QA that has to make sure that that still work. Of course, if it's a manual check, either you will have to add it to your release readiness review or whatever you call it, the checklist before you release an application that he has to recheck that to make sure there is no regression. Hopefully, you can also automate it with acceptance tests, which will make the holy grail, making security everyone's job, and then it will be just, uh, just a requirement in your, uh, in your software systems. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. So thanks, Aaron. Uh, so the um, uh, Q&A is open. If you guys have any questions, feel free to come here and ask your question. OK, so go ahead. 
Hi. I'm just wondering how many of those 90 cases that you implemented, how many of those were solely unit tests and how many used other tooling that you mentioned to achieve the result? I think I had a slide on that and that was exactly for uh, that. Yeah, this one. So out of... Uh, no, no, I don't have a slide on that. Mm, out of 90... Sorry, the 90 were implemented using unit and integration tests. I don't have a slide saying it's a unit or integration. Because the... the, the Yeah. Okay, so the question is how many of the 90, how do we map that 90 to this? So there was no combination. The 90 that we have implemented was either a unit or integration test. And for me, those are very similar. So it's sort of, it's code to test code. There was no tooling there. So of the 90 that we did, no, no tooling was involved. Does that answer the question? Okay, thank you. Okay. Do you see uh, your implementation reusable uh, across like different codes? Or it's like fully specific for your code and every module will need to go to this adventure of 90 tests, uh, writing this 90 tests? Yeah, that's a great question. So the question is, can we reuse your work? Yes, for sure. For sure you can reuse because some of the tests, although they are implemented in PHP, you have exactly the same sort of mechanisms in another tech stack. I would go again with the tech stacks that are comparable, uh, Spring Framework and .NET Frameworks. Um, at least those spring to mind. If you're doing something in C, I don't know, probably it's gonna be harder. But if you're doing like some tech stack that is a web-based devel application development, you could definitely reuse as an idea of how I would test that, which sort of primit testing primitives I can, I shall use. And again, I'm pretty sure that most of them will be reusable. So do you plan to share it and see this project of ISVS uh, testability? So yes. have your quotas in this control and then somebody else will add, not PHP, but C Sharp implementation, et cetera, et cetera. At this stage, we've released the tests themselves uh, as part of an open source. Uh, the, the tool that we have is an open source tooling, so you can go and check them out. But we didn't really generalize that and given it back to the ASVS community, like, okay, here is sort of a high-level overview of how you could do this using unit tests. But today, I was speaking to Josh, who is the uh, ASVS project lead. I'm not sure if I see him. Ah, there is Josh. So we are going to be involved with ASVS as contributor in the next millennia, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, we, it, it could be an item to, to work on and con contribute back. Because to the best of my knowledge, nobody has really done this. And it sort of seems as a, almost a low-hanging fruit. It didn't take much time. Well, At least for some requirements, it should be very easy. Yeah, our team started this, but again, same questions which you listed are uh, we had. So uh, what's possible, how far we should go. So you went significantly further, like estimation and implementation, so we spent maybe a fraction of time on this. Uh, but yeah, it's just seeing that it's possible is already very good uh, input. Thanks, that is very, that's awesome to hear. So we didn't do this for nothing. <laughs> so uh, before uh, thanking you for the last time, um, I have one question. So you said that you had uh, used this test to a different project. Do you, do you remember the percentage of uh, the use that you had? No, no. That was sort of an exploratory. Uh, ex it was an experiment, but I, we didn't really we didn't really check any percentages there. Okay. Okay. So, uh, round of applause to Aaron. Thank you. Thanks.